I was looking at this graph the other day. It was confusing. I didn't know what to do. So I thought to myself, sure, it would be pretty darn awesome if there were a video tutorial on graphical analysis of uh, physics, okay, of different formulas. So that's what I'm going to do for you right now. Because you know what? When, you, when you're when you staring at a graph, if you don't know how to interpret it, it's a bummer. And you're going to be spending like 90 years figuring out what the heck the question is even, or the graph is even showing you and you can't answer the question. And then you cry, and then you blame me, and you say, where was Mr. Levin? Why did he not provide me with the information I needed? Rabble, 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 rabble. Let's go do some uh, graphing. Okay, here we go. Graphical analysis. I'm going to draw you four graphs that you may see uh, as you interpret some of these basic physics uh, physics formulas. First graph I'm going to draw you is I'm going to draw this fancy graph. It's going to go down like this. Oh my goodness, that, that is just awesome. Look at that. Um, what if I told you that on the y-axis we have ourselves force and on the x-axis we have distance? Okay? Now force and distance is our x and y axis. And so one question that you're going to be asked is whether or not you could figure out what the area underneath of a curve means. So this would be pretty easy to figure out. We have a straight line. If we separate that, we have a square and we have a triangle. So without even understanding what is going on, we can take this and we can find out the area underneath of this curve. Okay. Now, how do you find the area of a square? Base times height, or height times base. So, force times distance. Okay, That's the x-axis, here's the height, here's the base. How do you find the area under a triangle? It is going to be force times distance divided by 2. That's the area of a triangle. So, if you wanted to find out the area under this curve, you're going to have to find out the area of the underneath this triangle and the square and add them together. So no big deal you can do that except what does this mean what is the area under this curve mean well if force times distance is our height times base which is our area we've already seen this work equals force times distance well there you go what will the area tell us underneath of this curve it will tell us work. Now that doesn't mean that the area under every curve is going to be work, but what you have to do is you have to look at what is here. Okay. In order to find the area underneath of these curves, you have to take the, the height and the base and multiply them together. Or multiply them together and divide them by two if you're dealing with a triangle, and then add them together. But what, what's important here is that force and distance is our y and x axis, which will give us work. So that's one question that you can expect. The other one that I want to show you is something like this. If you were to look at this diagram, this graph, and you have a big straight line. I love straight lines. Straight lines are great. Um, let's remember what I told you. Let's look at what's on the x and y axis. Let's say we had velocity over here and time over here. If you are looking at a graph that has velocity on its y axis and time on its, on its x axis, you can, this, tells, this graph tells you a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, um, if you were to calculate the slope, and you will remember from grade two or something, slope equals the rise over the run. Okay, the rise over the run, or the y-axis, the difference in y-axis over the difference in x-axis. Rise, run. So if you were to take the slope of this line, it would be the final velocity minus the final, or the initial velocity, right? That's the rise, right here. Final, let's say you're here and initial here. What is the difference between these? And then time and time. So the final time, which is here, minus the initial time, which is here. And if you found the slope of that, velocity over time, well, let's do the units. Velocity is meters per second, and to divide something, uh, well, it, it's like it's basically dividing, you can multiply its fraction, right? Multiplied by 1 over s. Well, this actually equals meters per seconds squared. s times s. 
meters per second squared, ladies and gentlemen, this slope equals acceleration, right? Velocity time, velocity time graphs, the slope of those will give you the acceleration of given whatever, right? Now, some, some graphs tell a story. So let's see if we can tell a story here. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put acceleration here and time over here. But I'm going to put a 0, 10 minus. We're going to deal with some vectors. Now, what if the graph looked something like this? Something like that. Okay. The acceleration is not changing. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's not getting... What is acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So the change in velocity here is not changing. But then it is getting drastically faster. The change in velocity is increasing in a positive direction. Right? But then the change in velocity is get decreasing really hardcore. If you find the slopes of these lines, you're going to be finding... or. or, or not the slopes, I shouldn't say that. If you're going to be looking at this, it tells the story that we already did slope over there. Acceleration is not changing, then it is changing, it's increasing hardcore, and then it's decreasing. Okay, this could be perhaps maybe a car on a runway and it tries to get around somebody but finds that there's a giant tree in his way, so he comes to a complete stop. Right? Or he reverses, goes in the other direction. So here's a story that I love to tell uh, my students. It's about this dude named Herbert the Thief, and I'm going to do the same thing, except this is going to be distance, and this is going to be time. Time always tells a good story, okay? So, distance times, let's get that graph showing a little bit better. There you go. So, what's going to happen is this. This is Herb. He is going to a party of thieves, um, but he needs, to, uh, he needs to go to this party. And so, he's starting at his house here. And he actually takes a leisurely stroll. Oh my goodness, it's going very, very well. Now, if you were to find the slope of this line, remember, rise over run, distance over time, d over t equals velocity. Okay. Now, but the thing is, because we are using positive and negative uh, distances, which is displacement, we are looking for, we're going to be having direction involved, which is a vector. So, Herb... Herbert goes <clears throat> 10 meters north. Let's say that the positive means north. So he goes 10 meters north, and it only takes him whatever time it is, right? You can find the velocity going up this way. But you know what? He forgot the nickel for his grandma, and so he actually had to go back, turn around, and go back to his house. Now, it is not saying, these slopes are not saying that he's getting slower he could be traveling, if these slopes are identical, he's traveling in this, at the same velocity, distance per time, right? It's just when we're dealing with vectors, and because it's going, it's going to be a negative slope, he is going in the negative direction, okay? Now, when he was home, he answered a phone call for said amount of time. So his velocity, the slope of a straight line is zero. He is not traveling anywhere right now. He took a phone call. And then he decided he was a little bit late, so he quickened his pace a little bit. But you know what? Halfway there, he remembered it wasn't at his grandma's house, and he didn't really need to go back to his house to get that nickel for her. It's actually at his uh, chief superintendent boss's whatever house. And he was super late, and he wanted to impress his boss. And so he ran to his house, which happens to be 10 meters in the other direction. So... He's walking, he's walking, he's walking. Oops, I forgot my nickel, 10 meters north. Then he walked 10 meters south, took a phone call, started walking again, realized he was late, and he booked it. If you find the slopes of all these lines, right, you it's going to tell a story. He's going, he's going the same speed or velocity. He's going the sp same velocity north as he is south here. He's not traveling anywhere here. He starts going north but then realizes he's late, and then he runs. The velocity of this slope will be more intense, and it will be a negative, it will be a negative velocity, okay? 
you know it's going to be a negative velocity because the slope is going to be is is going to be a negative. So that's what it's actually saying. You got to be very very careful when with graphic analysis. You have to focus on these x and y axis variables, and then figure out you know the slope is is going to tell you or the area is going to tell you. Okay, but in in my classes, if you're looking at this, if I'm going to ask you any question about the area, it's most likely going to talk about work. If it's going to talk about the slope, it's going to talk about the acceleration or the velocity, depending on what our formulas give you. So if I was to make a suggestion, take the formulas and figure out, um, you know, velocity equals distance over time. And if you see a graph that's distance over time, the slope will give you your velocity. So take your time, practice these. I'm sure there's lots of questions on the internet or in your textbook that will help you figure this out. So that's graphic analysis.